want to go from this to this, well, you're in luck, because I'm going to show you how I did it. First things first, though, the basics. All right, and now that we're here, we're going to make sure to queue up the right units. Follow my lead. Lazarus, Resbot, 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 Lazarus. Get the first five units out of our lab, and I'll show you how we're going to use them. First of all, your very first Lazarus, you don't help with. Put down another solar panel. <laughs> Put down that solar panel, and then when you boost out the, the Lazarus and the Constructors, you're going to have just the right amount of energy in order to fund them all. Switch your, or your uh, commander back to over here. Take this Lazarus before it's finished and select all the plants. You want to make sure you start eating those up right away. And you can see with the help of that Lazarus, we're going to be close to the right amount of energy to pump out these Constructors. Once the first Constructor is out, you go for one more solar panel, and you go back to the lab. Constructors will help build the next constructors. And then the commander goes back to the lab. And you finish up your second constructor. Now this third one is where things get really interesting. Uh, we're about to run out of metal here, so you start eating up your uh, start eating up your solar panel. You take these two, now that this third one is out, and you queue up five advanced solar panels. This one is going to create a construction turret over here. Boost out this, uh, boost out this final Lazarus right here. Start eating up the lab. Use the commander to help build this, uh, this construction turret right here, in between eating up this, uh, this laboratory. What this is going to do is give you a little bit of build power in your base, so that when your commander goes down eventually, you uh, don't have to worry about it in the back line. Now, if you feel like microing something, uh, you can take your commander and you can have him build T1 solar panels, or you can have him build wind. Uh, just send the commander off to build wind. What I like to do is just have him assist with this while these constructor or these uh, resbots rather eat up whatever plants are in the area. If you're on a map that doesn't have plants, it's definitely worthwhile to uh, go for that extra, extra wind production. So instead, here you just take the commander and queue up a two by two, a row of well two by X row of wind turbines. In this case, however, we are just going to use it to uh, build a help build these advanced solar panels. While this constructor over here will build the uh, energy converters that we're going to use to balance our energy economy and turn excess energy production into our uh, into our metal. So, the commander over here to keep eating up these T1 solar panels. As you build the advanced solar panels, you want to eat up the regular solar panels. Make sure not to overflow. You essentially want to minimize both overflows and you want to spend as much of your metal as possible. And then after the third one, you're going to want to put down another construction turret. Keep helping that out. You got to keep building your build power uh, and scaling it equivalently with your current needs here. So as the energy goes up and as we can as we can spend more energy, we need more build power here. And so you can see with those those turrets working on this advanced solar panel, we're putting in about 400-ish energy per second. We're getting about 300 per second here. Uh, and that is all well and good. All right, commander is done. Uh, what I'm gonna do is tell the commander to come over here and start building wind because we're not quite ready to sacrifice it yet. We need these guys to finish, then we need them to come over here. Right around here-ish. These guys are going to come over here and they're going to build a 2x2 two two of energy converters. We are accessing energy right now. It's not great. Commander is just barely out of range. Hold spacebar and X in order to uh, check that, by the way. Keep sure, make sure to check that. Make sure you're not uh, losing all your metal there. There we go. Now we're spending it on the lab. Dump all of your metal into the lab. There you go. Eat up these wind turbines because they're not really going to be very helpful in the grand scheme of things. 
and we're gonna have this guy come over here and start working on disassembling these advanced solar panels. We're not gonna tear these all apart because we're using them right now for energy conversion. Move your slider down, by the way, that's also going to let you convert these. Uh, but eventually we're gonna wanna eat these up to finish off this lab. So right now we're coasting on uh, all of the, the uh, energy production being good for our economy here. And this T2 lab should come up shortly. All right, 80% of the way, we're gonna send these constructor, or these uh, res bots rather, to go eat up this advanced solar panel. 300 metal for each one of these, and you can see that we are uh, narrowing in on that amount. And there we go. And that should be the very last necessary uh, metal in order to build this. Start up your T2 immediately. You're going to build that, and then you're gonna build a metal storage. don't need all these advanced solar panels. See, we're spending 15 metal per second and we're spending all of our energy per second. So we're, we're still using our resources effectively here. metal storage so that we can eat up our T2 lab here uh, with no problems. And as soon as this metal storage finishes up, we should be in a pretty good spot. And there we go. Right. That finishes up. The res bots are going to continue eating up the, uh, the lab here. Actually, keep that guy constructing that. And then you want to get all of your uh, all of your advanced metal extractors up and running as much as possible. I'm gonna move this energy bar up so we have a little bit more energy here because we're about to have a lot of metal. And you can see as soon as we uh, eat up that lab, we're gonna start spending our metal as quickly as we can make it. All right, and that's the uh, last one finishing up. Now we're gonna go for a fusion reactor right off the bat get into proper fusion power. And you can see we're dumping about 300 per second, but we are uh, gaining about 260. So three advanced solar panels is just about right in order to uh, keep energy production on par for the amount of build power that we have. That'll take about a minute. So we will let that finish up. See, we're draining 50 metal per second, but we're getting 24. All of our metal extractors working at peak operation. And this should finish up shortly. All right, we're moments away from finishing this up. Next thing we're gonna go for is a advanced energy converter, but we're also going to put down two more construction turrets here. See that we are now wasting energy because we don't have enough uh, energy drain, but we're gonna need more build power if we wanna effectively utilize this, uh, or effectively build these advanced energy converters. So we're gonna tack on two more build towers. It's gonna double our build power, at least as far as uh, construction turrets go, and then finish up this project. As soon as this is done, what we want to do is eat up these T1s just to free up the space. And then we also want to go for a couple more build turrets. Now, this is the critical moment where you have to look around the map and see who has what. If you have another techer somewhere else or somebody is building a uh, T2 lab and they can get a mobile anti-nuke out, you can, uh, you can go for that. If not, I would recommend, and I'm going to show you for the purposes of this build, building an anti-nuke right now. I'm going to show you it doesn't really hinder the build very much uh, because you're still going to be gaining a net profit of energy. So we're going to throw this down. This should be finished up in just a little while here. It costs 1500 but it does protect a massive radius. You can see it keeps this entire side protected. If I built it even further out, if you built it over here, for instance, it would protect even more. Um, but, you know, just building it in the back to show you that it still functions within the uh, purposes of this build here. We're going to eat up these T1 solar panels, or T1 uh, energy converters, rather. Slowly but surely. Put those guys in there, no wasted build power. And then we're looking good. Going to start up a, another advanced energy converter over here. And going to start three build, tur build turrets right here. Just like this. We can move our energy slider over a little bit. 
the reactor functions as energy storage a little bit, so you can uh, you can afford to move your slider over just a tad. And then before that's done, put, peel this guy off and then put down another fusion reactor. As far as funding this goes, first thing we're going to sacrifice is these uh, advanced solar panels, which we no longer need. Whoops, trying to convince these guys to eat these up. There we go. Advanced solar panels are going to go down. Uh, no longer need those. The next thing we're going to sacrifice is the metal storage because we don't really need that either. Though it can be quite nice. Uh, but you can see we're already about a little under halfway here. Eat that up. Put it all into here. I want to put as much metal into this thing as possible. At this point, you can also eat these guys up. Need a little bit more metal. We're really just trying to power through to this second fusion reactor. Once you're on your second fusion reactor, you're in a really good spot. Before it finishes, get your constructor back on the move. And we're going to start building in this direction. I'm going to show you the... Uh, the direction we're going to build and actually eat this guy up and then we're going to build like this and we'll hit spacebar while queuing that in order to get those guys working together and then we're going to build a another i'm wasting tons of energy right here but that's okay it'll eventually be cured as we get more build power down and i'm going to pause this guy pause this guy while we work on this project and as soon as this is done, we will start eating, or we will start going for a fusion reactor. Now, uh, we're going to eat the, you have to check around the map. You have to make sure that your teammates aren't falling because right now is a perfect time where you can transition into making T2 units, early T2 units. But assuming that all lines are held and you're, you're clear to do so, you can go straight into your advanced fusion reactor. Now, uh, one easy way to fund a fusion reactor early on is to go for a, uh, go for the reclaim on some of your regular fusion reactors. You just have to be careful because you need the energy to build it. So don't forget about that. You basically need to make sure that you get about halfway before uh, going any further. Now I'm going to put down an energy storage and I'm going to re-put down that uh, metal storage over here. We'll put it right over here. Try and fold everything in neatly here. Build this first. Turn on, turn on high priority so it builds faster a little bit faster anyway and then build up the metal storage and turn off high priority hey, everybody help eat that up 16 percent of the way through here means we still have plenty of metal to put into this that's okay we'll be doing so shortly and as you can see the fusion reactor is about to finish up make sure you build you put this uh you put this metal storage down before eating up your fusion reactor. It's an easy way to lose a, I don't know, about 4,000 metal. <laughs> or about, about 1,000 metal. 2,000 metal, something like that. A lot of metal you will lose. Now, if you have spare constructors, what you can do is just tell them to go build a big wind turbine farm. It's a very inexpensive way to uh, continually increase your energy production. Not as dramatic an increase as, uh, for instance, the fusion reactor is, but still, still significant. And we we want to start eating this, and the reason for that is we want to balance the build power so that this doesn't take as long, or so that it takes a little bit longer, rather, uh, we don't drain our metal as quickly. You can see we're 76% of the way through, uh, and we but we're only getting energy from the fusion reactor, and residual runoff from the constructors here. So you don't want to finish eating this, but you want to eat it down to its barest bones so you can finish up the fusion reactor once you're uh, once you're ready for that. All right, we'll get back on the fusion reactor. and We'll just let this finish up naturally here. And this guy will be producing wind power over here for us as well. Now it's important that as soon as this finishes up, you start working on a new energy converter, because otherwise you're gonna start leaking a ton of energy. I'm gonna turn the slider down as well here. Try and crank out as much energy as possible. All right, 98, 99, and eat this guy up. All right, energy converter, energy converter. 
we need more build power. Just like that. So you can see we're doing kind of an L shape here. Very, very good technique for cramming a lot of build power into a concentrated area is building a little bend and then putting your uh, expensive stuff right there where the bend is. And then we're gonna go for a second fusion reactor. Now on one fusion reactor, you can go into T2. So if you wanted to transition, this would be the point where you could transition into T2. You can also transition into T2 air. Um, that works pretty well too. You have a lot of build power here, so it's very good if you put a air tower uh, or an airfield right here. There's enough build power to fund all that. But if you want to just continue the eco, uh, you can just go into a fusion reactor. Two fusion reactors, and you're looking pretty solid to run a uh, T2 airfield at basically full capacity. So you can pump out fighters essentially every second is uh, very very powerful of course but if you are just interested in uh, going for going for eco here then don't worry about that you just go into this um, so now this will finish up here in just a second and see we're 19 minutes by not not by far the uh, quickest build ever but it certainly works for me and so I wanted to share it with you guys now these res bots are also auxiliary and uh, you don't need them very much for anything anymore uh, we've kind of reclaimed everything that we plan on reclaiming so feel free to donate them to somebody on the front line, zoom out, see who has a big wreckage field. Either send the resbots there yourself to go reclaim or just uh, send them to your teammate to go reclaim. Either way, you're gonna end up pulling in a lot of metal for your team and it'll, it'll help them out quite a bit. Especially if you have a vehicles player, if somebody who's playing vehicles, T1 or T2. Uh, yeah, send out, send out your resbots to them because they very well may need a, uh, some sort of easy way to reclaim off the battlefield. Anyways, you can see that we're picking up speed here. With uh, one fusion reactor, we can basically keep four of these online, uh, with a fifth coming on and offline as we spend the metal that it generates. But with two of these online, we're going to be well in a position to uh, go for a little bit more here. Just realizing these are misaligned too. Not the end of the world. Just uh, bugs my OCD. <laughs> Now the ratio is one to four. Uh, so one fusion reactor to four energy converters. And you can see as soon as I finish up that fusion reactor, these uh, energy converters all start glowing bright yellow, indicating that they are ripping and roaring at full capacity. You can also see with your energy converter bar up there, or energy converter uh, tab, exactly how much is going on. Uh, and then we are going to go for a three fusion reactor setup. And three fusion reactors typically works really well for doing T3. So I'm going to move my T2 constructor over here already because it is time to go for our T3 lab. Now there's, you could kind of put it anywhere on the outside here. You're not going to get a perfect uh, amount of build power here, but you'll get pretty close. And I think right here will be close enough that we might actually get everything. And then what you can do is take your T1 and when you're ready to expand the build power, you drag it down in this direction. Uh, we'll do something like that. And then you have build power that's going to come up right next to the T3 lab, and you'll be ready for it. Already starting up the lab. Uh, this is a easy way to get this underway. Just put a little bit of metal into it while you can. Uh, and you can see that I actually don't even have enough energy converters right now. I am leaking a little bit of energy. One, two three, four. I guess I should have gone for five. I didn't account for the fact that there would be runoff because uh, we're not converting perfectly. All right, I'm going to tell these guys to finish this with a high priority. Should come up relatively quickly here. these are working on this uh they're gonna work on that t3 lab and while they're doing that we're gonna move the constructor over here and we're gonna get nine more energy converters 
and we're going to tell these closest uh, 36912 to work on these energy converters. And you guys, oh, I should train, take all of you and turn them to low priority and then take you guys and tell them to high priority. That way our uh, economy continues to grow here. You can see we're accessing quite a bit of energy. In a multiplayer, you probably don't have to worry about that because there's probably somebody else on your team that's uh, more than happy to eat up that energy. But in this situation, it is a, uh, it is a deficit and we definitely don't want to be there. Energy excess, 126,000, so that's quite bad. Uh, metal excess, however, is one. So that's really the number you want to keep down here. And then once you get into T3, there's a couple of options. Uh, if there's any breakaways, anybody trying to push through your lines, anyone with a, a tank rush or something, this is 25 minutes into the game, so uh, definitely well into T2, but also if you're uh, looking at, like, um, people that are going for any kind of uh, any kind of early T3 shenanigans. It'll be about time that they show their hand. Uh, so what you can do if you're dealing with that is go for Marauder. So usually I'll just turn this on repeat and I'll set a bunch of Marauder to start running to the furthest point on the map because that would be the least convenient place for them to attack. So I just assume that that's where it'll happen. Um, and then I can always ready. pull them around wherever else. T3 unit is indeed ready. Energy converters are coming up and we're going to build an excess of energy converters here. Uh, we're not going to build all these, though. We're actually only going to build six, and then the next fusion reactor is going to come up over here. We're going to go for three of them. Probably won't build all three of these. We'll probably just start one of them, and, we, and we'll uh, change the build order before we finish it. But it's always good to plan ahead in case you get distracted microing these units or something. So these marauders you would use to shut down any sort of early tank push that comes, or, uh, well, mid-game tank push, because they would, they would have been spiraling their numbers upwards. Uh, and at this point, you want to make sure that you have the units to deal with that. But you can see with three fusion reactors, we keep enough of these energy converters on to have a sizable economy while also uh, having enough energy to fund all of this. So this is really nice. We're going to go for another fusion reactor, and that'll probably make us excess a little bit here, but with the amount that we're spending into the lab as well, because each of these marauders is 21,000 metal apiece, or energy apiece, rather. So it's important to remember that. Now, uh, other options, you have the Razorback, which is much more expensive, both in uh, energy and metal, but it's a much more durable and much more damaging option for frontline. I would not recommend going for these first. I would recommend going for Vanguards. Vanguards are sort of a support unit, and I would kind of cue them to pointed locations, areas where they're uh, strategically valuable. So typically there will be a front line along here. Um, that's a good place to pull them, to put them. Uh, there's another front line that'll be right here in the middle. And arguably this uh, center, this entire center island will be contested here. Uh, so you can always consider putting them uh, somewhere on here. You can always put them on the low ground and set them to uh, high, high trajectory mode as well. That's another option. But now that you have three fusion reactors, you're basically ready to continuously start pumping out those T3 units. We've arrived here at the late game. 26 minutes in, uh, and you're ready to start making maneuvers that will help your team. And the important thing is to not forget to continue uh, expanding, uh, continue growing your economy. And now that you have this convenient shape for your buildings, you kind of have this uh, sort of Tetris piece here. Uh, you can start using the corners for building really expensive things. So all the fusion reactors go here, all the energy converters go here, the T3 lab is here, and you can build other stuff uh, over here, more energy converters, you can build more, basically anything wherever you need it. And then if you want more build power, you just extend this backwards like this. So you can see, going for another fusion reactor, I did forget to change that over. We're going to move this guy back over here, and we're going to go for some more uh, energy converters. At this point, not a terrible issue, though, because, the uh, again, the energy runoff is uh, quite drastic here, but it's only about 1,000 that we're losing per second. Um, and it's all going into fusion reactors and T3 units, so it's not like we're not producing anything out of all that. It's just, uh, it's just taking a second here to get this constructor over here to get more energy converters. It's an age-old question. Is it better to go for more energy converters or better to go for more uh, power first? Um, if you're going for eco in the back line, there's no reason you shouldn't be a little bit greedy. Uh, and so one justification would be that this runoff power is going to my team. And so, you know, they're going to get to benefit from that for at least a little bit here. Anyways, energy converter will come up and it won't take too many of these in order to uh, get this up and running. You can see the vanguards already crawling their way across the map. As long as these don't get sniped by anything, they will be an invaluable asset on the front lines, and uh, they'll be well worth having in your composition. And then what I'm going to do is... One, two... Looks like these are two wide. 
So right about here, we're gonna bring this across in this direction. And you can see we're building we're building angular structures, we're building corners and that sort of thing. I want to make sure that there's some way to continue expanding, continue continuing to use the geometry of this base however we want to. Our energy consumption is finally hitting the uh, the a similar bound to our uh, energy production here. As you can see these things are slowly coming up, as well as our spending on more fusion reactors, all that good stuff. At this point, probably worthwhile to go for these Razorbacks. Again, you can have these stomping around however you'd like. Vanguard, I would definitely posture in a line, make sure that they're all organized appropriately, and your uh, Razorbacks are going to be really key to holding down any sort of uh, any sort of bot aggression, whether it's T1 or T2. When the fusion reactor comes online, that's going to kick a bunch of these into high gear, going to boost our uh, economy here just a little bit. And once you hit six fusion reactors, I would say that you can start going for uh, Razorbacks consistently, um, or even Titans. You can you can start pumping out Titans if you want, or uh, Thors as well. It kind of goes it kind of goes these three units. You have Marauders, Razorbacks, and Vanguards, uh, I guess as well as Lunkheads, but those are more situational. Uh, and then eventually you get into Thors, and then after you've uh, really expanded, you go into Titans. Um, Titans, however, are very slow and they're very durable, so you want to use those with a bit more caution. You, you, you have to really be uh, specific about where you want to use those. Another option, of course, is to use this T1 constructor you've kept for uh, up, upgrading your build power here and use it to build a air lab and go for some of those aerial constructors. That's another way to increase the build power on any of these uh, units that you may need. Uh, for instance, the T3 lab or the uh, T2 constructor, any of that. Go for a bunch of those T1 air constructors. For Armada, the T1 air constructor is relatively efficient, uh, and so it's well worth getting invested in. Sometimes what I like to do, it's a simple thing to micro, but you just hold spacebar and right click to get them to move into a better position. Just gonna help you out ever so slightly. We'll start up two more fusion reactors over there. You can see Razorback's coming up relatively effectively at this point. 30-ish seconds of Razorback, more or less. Not bad. And those are marching across the map here. You use Razorbacks as assault troops. You use the uh, Marauders as shock troops. You use the Vanguards, of course, as sort of a long-range long siege option. They basically outrange everything in the T1 and T2 handbook. Uh, and then you use Thors to shut down any really heavily defended areas that you otherwise can't use vanguards on. Um, although in composition, the Thor and the vanguard is a very, very strong unit. I'm going to switch into uh, Thor production here just to show you. This also works for Thors. Little bit slower, but we did have a backlog of metal there, so going to be all right. Thors are very energy dense, 240,000 energy per Thor, so you have to uh, you have to account for that. You're gonna you're not gonna produce as much metal when you're going into Thors. You need a, a whole lot more fusion reactors. Not the end of the world though. Do this gotta come here and then build these two. Having a little bit of a panic attack, it looks like. And there we go. First Thor hits the battlefield, and you're basically ready to contribute wherever you'd like. Now uh, consider air forces. Consider getting yourself some sort of air force. Consider getting some anti-air defenses. Um, a fighter screen of your own, a private fighter screen for this much economy is well warranted. So it's something I would definitely recommend looking into. Start building a, a T1 lab. And then, like I said, what you can do with this, because you have these branches, right, that kind of go in different directions, you can carry this out in this direction. And then in this direction. And then go for something like this more or less, and then you're gonna have a nice little airfield. Um, just one option, and of course there's essentially unlimited options, but that's how I like to do it, and I think it's a, uh, I think it's a great way to keep your build power organized while also allowing you to branch in different areas and uh, make, make different sections of the base that expand quick enough to, uh, to be meaningful, but also are used efficiently. Yep, there we go. Second Thor about to hit the battlefield. Looks like it's about a minute gap between these stores. More or less. And there we go. And so with this, you're going to be in a pretty good position. You kind of have to balance with the expense of the unit that you're going to be building. So if it's a really energy dense unit like the Titan or the Thor, 
uh, you're going to need more fusion reactors. If you're going to be going for something lighter, like the Vanguards, Razorbacks, or Marauders, or the Lunkheads, uh, you don't need as many fusion reactors. And then for every fusion reactor, you go for four energy converters, more or less, but you kind of just throw them around wherever you have room, and uh, you're going to be in a really good spot. All right, I think that's about all I have to show here. And uh, yeah, that'll do it. Hope this was informative. Hope this helped you. Uh, feel free to drop a like down below if it did any of those things or if you're just feeling generous today. Of course, leave a comment if there's anything you think I missed or anything that you'd like to contribute here. And uh, I guess I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.